Dear Mr. Vice Minister Emil Högberg, Mr. Marcus Wallenberg, President of ICAS, Dr. Acevedo, delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and welcome to Sweden and the Waterfront Congress Center in Stockholm. I'm Roland Karlsson, Chairman of the Swedish Society of Aeronautics and Astronautics, FTF. And on behalf of FTF and Innovair, the Swedish Strategic Innovation Program for Aeronautics, it's a great honor for me and pleasure to welcome you to attend the 33rd ICAS Congress. ICAS Congress is the most influential international forum for aeronautical science and technology. And ICAS Congresses are crucial as opportunities for professionals in aeronautics to meet physically, present new ideas and results, network and create business opportunities. For a successful ICAS Congress, the ICAS Secretariat and Program Committee are the most crucial elements. Without the dedicated and efficient work of the officials at ICAS, we wouldn't be here today. The program committee has done an excellent job in setting up an exciting program of today's relevant topics, and more than 900 abstracts were received and reviewed. The program committee has ensured that Congress presentations cover the core aeronautical disciplines and issues that reflect new challenges and opportunities facing today's aeronautics and aviation. I want to highlight the smooth, efficient and timely cooperation between us, FTF and IMVAR and ICAS in preparing for Congress. Matters were solved by reverse emails or phone conversations and always in an open and welcoming atmosphere. A few tricky issues were solved with sound and efficient diplomacy. Moreover, we are utterly grateful for the generous contributions and dedicated participation of our partners and exhibitors who allowed us to book Sweden's newest and finest Congress venue, the Waterfront Congress Center. In my opinion, the aeronautical industry needs more of collaboration and cooperation to cater for the exponentially rising costs to meet society's demands on aviation. The ICAS community is the most weighty international body with the capability to, to evaluate and promote innovations and technologies in response to new requirements and challenges for future generations of aviation. Finally, I, I want to thank our local organization committee for its excellent work during the last two years. A handful of people have iteratively shaped the framework for Congress and Innovair has been the most important partner and bridge to official entities and institutions. For the day-to-day -day practical work, we once again had the pleasure to work with the Meet Again conference organizer. There were a few issues on the way, such as the pandemic, but still we were confident that Congress would attract the foremost engineers and scientists in aeronautics to attend physically. The response was overwhelming. More than 900 delegates from 35 nations are registered and 17 partners and exhibitors are represented here. However, there are two persons on our local co <coughs> organizing committee that I want to shed light on. Mr. Anders Gustafsson and Mr. Anders Blom. Mr. Gustafsson is a former ICAS executive secretary and treasurer and Dr. Blom is one of Sweden's foremost scientists and spokesman for aeronautics. Without the extraordinary dedication, huge amount of experience, exceptional organizational skills and wisdom of those two persons, we would have been short in preparing for this event. With this word, few words, I want to introduce Mr. Marcus Wallenberg. And Mr. Wallenberg represents, without comparison, the most influential and prominent Swedish family. And Marcus Wallenberg is Sweden's most well-known and respected industrialist and banker. Please, Mr. Wallenberg. Uh, 
Um, thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies. Um, I, I really want to thank Roland um, for this introduction. I want to thank you for having me today uh, as a speaker, uh, and that you want to listen to a banker is even more interesting. Um, anyway, I, I, I want to say that we all know the importance of ICAS in the field of aeronautics and the fact that uh, the organization has decided to be here in Stockholm is something that we all appreciate very, very much. Uh, almost 1,000 delegates uh, from a wide group of nations is, is very, very important. Uh, so thank you for being here. And also, let me just say a couple of words. My, my family has been in banking and industry for uh, more than 165 years now. Uh, we are very close to research and development in this country uh, through supporting Swedish universities and educational establishments on, on research, uh, which we, um, where we generate the funds basically by uh, being major shareholders of certain corporations uh, here in Sweden. So for us, uh, the question of research and development is one of the key aspects uh, to what we're doing uh, in, uh, here in Sweden. So let me uh, just take a couple of moments to think about what is facing us right now, because sometimes it's better to just lift the eyes a little bit to the horizon number of challenges that we all have to deal with. Uh, and one of the f questions that we are asking ourselves as Swedes, but also representing Swedish corporations, is that the rule-based world order, where we have uh, an open competition and a global trade system, is something we have been used to. And it's been a decisive factor to increase uh, the trade, business, and wealth that we have seen uh, since the Second World War. Now, today, it seems that we are clearly moving away from this. And we have a number of common challenges that we have to deal with. We have this discussion about and the, the rift in trade and technology between the United States and China. We have the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We see, from a business point of view, disrupted supply chains and shortages of strategic components. And these uh, are coupled with, we will read about every morning, which are the energy shortages, so the energy problems in Europe. We have inflationary pressure coming up. Uh, we have financial markets, which are more and more unstable. So I would say that Looking at the, what we have been used to is not something that we can take for granted for the future, but probably we have to understand that we live in a changed world right now. And this gives a situation which is for business people not so good because it gives a number of uncertainties ahead. And the world economy and the budgets are being impacted by this. And we know that we are seeing more and more protectionism. We see more and more climate change issues that we have to deal with. And all of this gives us a number of th things we have to think about. So when we live in a time of great changes, and perhaps that we're seeing it from a negative perspective, at the same time, at least from when I look upon it from the foundation's point of view and business point of view, we are living in an unprecedented time in terms of changes and uh, big steps forward in both science and technology. And we also know that in times of difficulties, some of the greatest technology changes and advancements are being taken care of through engineering discoveries and new inventions. And of course, the work that you are undertaking, all of you sitting here and we're participating in these conferences, is something that should continue to advance the probabilities to find solutions for the future. 
And we all know that the changes of flying and transporting people and goods in the future with new propulsion systems, new alternative fuels, new software uh, possibilities, all of this will probably give us, like it has so many times before, possibilities to move things ahead in the future. But at the same time, and maybe this is a Swedish uh, viewpoint, but at least from our point of view, you can't do all of this alone. When I look upon it from a Swedish point of view, in Sweden, we find it that when we have to compete and work outside this country, it's all based on what we are able to innovate, our technical knowledge, and based on partnerships and cooperations, both domestically and internationally. This is a small country that you're visiting. We are dependent to more than 50% on export, on everything we do. Our welfare state, which is quite well known, is completely dependent that we are able to generate substantial export volumes and business by and th thereby supporting what is going on in this country from a, from a very wide perspective. And we have, over the years, been able to build a very strong industrial base. But we have been always supported by a strong belief of the market forces. Open competition, open trade, is something that we find to be very, very important. But another aspect that we have been using over the years is what we call the triple helix model. Basically, the strong collaboration between business, academia, and politics. And it has been, in the past, something that has been serving us very, very well, and which I personally believe is one of the reasons why we are able to have a good industrial base. There are a number of, 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 of uh, historical examples that has really helped on this. In 1946, this, the whole Scandinavian uh, three countries decided that we needed an airline and we cooperated between both business and government to form SAS to be able to support business in transporting themselves all over the place. We have, as you may know, a defense and um, aeronautics company called Saab here. It was formed in 1937 and it is really a joint venture between the Swedish government and Saab uh, and business. And it was created in the time before the Second World War to be able to fulfill the security needs of Sweden at the time. And over the years, we have produced uh, thousands of aircraft, um, primarily in new generations for defense, but also for civilian use over the years. And this has been an extremely important point for Sweden during the years that we were non-aligned. And as you know, now we have um, applied to become a member of NATO. And for us, when we think about this, we are one of the few countries in this world that actually can put together a modern and very advanced uh, fighter aircraft. And this has not been done without, uh, in, in singularity, but ab absolutely from a point of view of cooperation, both naturally and internationally. And lately, we have a joint venture with the Boeing company, which I know you will listen to later on in this program, uh, which is addressing the trainer aircraft needs for the United States Air Force. And we are very, very happy for this cooperation. It has been an extremely quick and fast development of this completely new aircraft. So what, what is my message to you here today? Well, we are living in a very, very challenging world. And we see an, an increase of the amount of tension, but also possibilities. We need 
to continue to develop and find ways to cooperate much more over borders than less. The time we live living in, we are now contracting, we're using protectionism. We have to change that and we have to, um, uh, to cooperate much more. And I'm convinced that in the field of aeronautics, where you are used to use the tool of cooperating in such a great way over the years, we really should take the lead in this group to do that. And we are also having other types of cooperations, which we should build in. Just in EU, as you know, we have the whole Clean Aviation Act, which is a very important tool for getting to uh, fossil free or a clean way of propelling aircraft by 2050 uh, on sustainable fuel, etc. And we also have the EDF, uh, which is really supporting the defense industries on cooperating much more within EU. We should do more of this. We should more uh, working together to solve these common problems at, that we see in front of us. So I just want to say thank you very much for being here. Uh, I hope we are going to find more solutions to some of these challenges that we're looking, because as I said earlier, we are convinced that the collaboration between business, between academia and the official political side is absolutely necessary to uh, be able to move things ahead. Hoping that you will have a rewarding conference and that you will have a great stay in Stockholm. Thank you very much. Should I go there or he's gonna, is he going to call me? Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Inspiring and interesting talk Thank and you. also a hopeful talk. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it's now time to uh, call for Dr. Zhao Acevedo for the formal opening of the ICAS 2022 Congress. Zhao, stage is yours. Thank you, Robert. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Juan Luis Azevedo, and it has been a privilege and an honor to serve for almost two years now as president of the International Council of the Aeronautical Sciences. Therefore, on behalf of ICAS, I formally welcome you to the 33rd ICAS Congress in this beautiful city of Stockholm. ICAS Congresses have been held in Stockholm previously in 1962, which was the third ICAS Congress, and in 1990. And we are extremely happy to come back to Stockholm to, for the present event. As some of you may know, ICAS was created in 1957 under the inspiration of Professor Theodor von Karman as a non-governmental, not-for-profit, non-political, scientific organization to encourage the free international exchange of information on aeronautical research and technology. The organization of an ICANN's Congress is a very challenging, perhaps even daunting, undertaking. Therefore, we are extremely grateful to the Swedish Society of Aeronautics and Astronautics, FTF, and to the Swedish Strategic Program for Aeronautics, Innover, our hosts here in Sweden, for their tremendous effort in organizing this year's Congress. I would also like to thank the various companies and institutions that have generously sponsored the present Congress. We would not be here without your support. So thank you for your commitment to ICAS, it, it, to the industry that we serve. Uh, I mentioned this yesterday already, but uh, I believe that the, I the ICAS program committee has organized a very strong technical program. For the first time in recent years, 
we will have a fairly large portion of the ICAS technical program, consisting of invited lectures and actually some full invited sessions in some cases, in which you will hear the latest developments and challenges in all areas of aeronautics from renowned experts from all over the world. This is in addition to the traditional ICAS award lectures and general lectures, and of course, the technical sessions with submitted papers. Uh, talking about submitted papers, we have received a total of approximately 950 abstracts from 35 countries for this conference. Uh, from, from these abstracts, the program committee has selected 565 papers. We also have 18 invited sessions and several regular sessions which are being kicked off by invited papers. For the first time in an ICAS Congress, we will have 14 parallel sessions happening throughout the week. If we look at the total number of participants, they are really record-breaking for ICAS. We have over 950 Congress delegates and a total of almost 1,100 participants, including spouses. Of course, these numbers are preliminary and they reflect the situation as of last Friday. I will have final numbers for you guys on Thursday. We are also experimenting with different technical session formats and have included some panel sessions in the technical program. As I said, I mean, I believe that we have assembled a very strong technical program, and I hope you will find it interesting and worth of your time and effort. I have also to acknowledge the work of the ICAS program committee and of our secretariat, especially Mr. Bodo Henriks, the ICAS coordinator, for organizing the scientific portion of our technical program. For the first time, we have adopted a schedule of abstract submission much closer to the event, as we believe that this procedure is consistent with the speed in which developments currently happen in our industry. It is true that the compressed schedule for the scientific organization of the present Congress was also motivated by the fact that our previous Congress in Shanghai had to be postponed by one year due to, co due to the COVID pandemic. In any event, we believe that the experiment was successful and we intend to practice this compressed schedule for organizing the technical portion of the Congress for the future. Since I mentioned COVID, I have to admit that although the situation here in Sweden is somewhat normalized for some time, there were serious concerns about the ability of colleagues from some countries to actually come to Stockholm due to the ongoing restrictions that still persist in parts of the world due to, due to the COVID pandemic. At the end, however, participants from most countries have been able to travel to Stockholm. A notable exception are our Chinese colleagues who have organized the previous ICAS Congress, as I just mentioned, with a tremendous dedication and who have submitted a very large number of contributions to the present Congress. In consultation with the Chinese Society of Aeronautics and Astronautics, we have arranged for a very special situation for our Chinese authors who have pre-recorded their presentation, presentations and such recordings will be presented here in the technical sessions. Some of the sessions will also be recorded and they will be available to our Chinese participants. Additional challenges to the organization of the present Congress have arisen due to the war in Ukraine. In consultation with SAGI, the Central Aerohydrodynamic Institute, which formerly represents Russia at ICAS, our Russian colleagues have voluntarily withdrawn their contributions to the ICAS 2022 Congress. In conclusion, it is my pleasure to once again welcome you to Stockholm and to the 33rd ICAS Congress. I encourage you to take advantage of the very intense but hopefully very interesting 
technical program that has been prepared for you in the present Congress, as well as the networking and cultural opportunities that we will have throughout the week. I wish you all a very productive time during this week, and with that, I officially declare the 33rd ICAS Congress open. Thank you very much for your attention. I would like them to invite Mr. Axel Probst, our ICAS Executive Secretary, whom I believe has some announcement to us. Axel, please. Thank you, Joao. Very small announcement. The first announcement I would like to make is uh, that I'm extremely happy to see you all in person again after four years of not seeing you in person but only on the screen and in this wonderful city of Stockholm with our fantastic guests. My name is Axel Probst and together with Bodo Heinrichs we are running the Secretariat in room 33. So if you have any complaints or anything which you, what you think we did good or could do better, please come and see us. If you don't want to see us because of that, see us because of a nice coffee and maybe a small chat or something. Um, I will be forcing you every morning to think about certain things. Uh, the first thing I'd like you to remind you is um, we have a questionnaire on site, which uh, on the on the website, which enables us to get better in the future. Hopefully, we are still or we are already on a on a very good track. Uh, and as our president was mentioning, with the numbers and with the city and with the organization, I think everything is running good so far. But again, uh, with your very good feedback, we can definitely get better. And as a very nice token of appreciation, we will have a lottery at the closing ceremony where we will um, give away one sub sponsored Gripen model uh, to the winner then. But you have to fill in your name for this at the questionnaire and uh, give us feedback. The second thing is for those of you who haven't read the 10 emails we've sent out so far, please upload your papers prior to entering the session room. Uh, we have a session uh, upload room in uh, room two, um, uh, possibility in room 21, so that would be a possibility for you to go there with a the USB stick to room 21 and upload your paper. You cannot upload this on the laptop which is in your session room. It's not possible. You have to run then. If you if you just approach it with a USB stick, you have to run to room 21 and come back. Which, which is maybe good for your calorie situation, but not good for the session because it definitely needs to, to wait for you then. So please take advantage of this and please do this. And um, last not least, uh, I would remind the students that uh, tomorrow prior to the student party, we have a speed mentoring in this room at six o'clock. So directly after the, the sessions will close, please all the students and the mentors, of course, come to this room and enjoy the speed mentoring. Um, as a little appreciation, everybody who attends the speed mentoring will also get one extra voucher for drinks later on for the student party. I guess that's it so far. I'm very happy to introduce Mr. Anders, Anders Gustafsson, uh, not only because he has some very good details for you to take uh, or to remember as well, but also he's my predecessor and uh, I'm very much in love with the, the city of Stockholm due to the fact that Anders gave me a fantastic handover of the, of the positions, although I think that he wasn't really pre prepared to sit on the other side of the table actually organizing a <laughs> congress, but I think in the end he hopefully put in, uh, into the questionnaire some details that we together did quite well as well. Thanks a lot. Anders. Okay. okay, I was introduced. I don't need to present myself. Some housekeeping announcements then from us as the local organizers. And you see on the screen a little map for the reception in the city hall uh, this evening. And the gates there will open at 6.30. And uh, you can download the map with a QR code, and it's about 10 minutes walk to get there on the other side of the water. You can't miss the building because it's very visible. But you have got this uh, invitation card from the city of Stockholm, and that's your entrance ticket to get in there. So don't forget that. It's a standing reception with food. It's, you are not seated as in the Nobel banquet, but we are in the same room. Then, in your bag, you got a printed overview of the sessions. And for the first day, it might be a bit confusion, confusing to find the way in this building, which has several floors. And in this paper, could we have that on the screen? The next picture. 
there. In the middle, there is uh, the blue line shows you the level and the room number to find the sessions you should want to attend. And then the next picture is the map of this Congress Center. Please study that to get familiarized with the building and the different floors, and it's written where the tracks are. So during the coffee break, you might walk around to find your way. Then you have also received, if we take the next picture, an instruction about this virtual platform, which you can download into your smartphone, and there we will find all the latest details about the technical program. And as was mentioned, uh, this opening session, all the plenary lectures and the track one sessions in this room will be video recorded. The plenary lectures will be made available on this virtual platform the next morning. So if you are attending the other technical sessions, you are not missing the technical session in this room. You can watch them afterwards. Uh, so I think that's all I had to say now. So we look forward to an interested, interesting and productive week. Welcome to Stockholm.